Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in to our monthly unboxing and showcase of the latest and greatest products from the tech and the smart home industry. Oh, yeah, why didn't we get the heavy one? Come on. It's 70% relative humidity in my studio, and that's not just from me sweating carrying this box from Medea, which is the Smart Dehumidifier with a pump. Pretty sure this is the first dehumidifier I've seen with any sort of smart features. And this, by the way, alongside some other AC units that they have, is part of the energy challenge that we talked about a few months ago on the channel. Quick start guide. I hope you guys like my shorts. They're pretty stylish. What do you think? Oh, good lord. Oh. Oh. My pipe is bent. We got four casters and some little, I think these are just connection plates for the bottom. Uh, we've got a user manual, actually, not that uh, deluxe, you don't have to go through that much with it. This is the outlet hose, I think, and an inlet hose. Man, I don't know what that thing is. It must be another type of hose. We got a big old bucket. And the actual installation of this thing is quite simple. So it comes in the box like this. You can do that lift and you turn 90 degrees. And as you place it in, give it a turn, you have this going on. So this is gonna show you how much water you've actually collected. This is just, if you wanna drain straight out uh, into the drain in your home, you can do that through there. Now on this side of the unit, we also have a pump. So this specific one, this is a pump outlet. So you could turn on the pump here. This cable, I could just basically pull this out. Okay, and we got these little clips here that I can push back in. On this is where you put the casters. If you want the casters, you're basically gonna slide them in. You're just gonna push that down. Now, I'm not actually gonna put the casters in because I'm on my table and I don't want things to roll. I mean, I'm super strong. So this thing must weigh thousands of pounds because look, I'm struggling to do that. <laughs> yeah, thousands. Okay. So you can see all the buttons on the front here. Got a lot of different control on screen or on the top of this. Basically it's gonna take in, and there's a filter here, or it's gonna take in the air, uh, clean out the water, so to speak and then push out uh, dehumidified air, which is really nice when you get 70% humidity. The big point of these is that they work with both Google and Amazon voice assistants, plus they work with If This Then That, which will actually give me a lot of access to a lot of humidity sensors very quickly. Change dehumidifier to low. Dehumidifier on. Okay. Now this one's not such an energy challenge type of product, although everything coming from Medea is Energy Star certified. So they are very energy efficient for what they are. My plan with this is twofold. Number one, I'm gonna deal with the humidity down here. That is far too humid uh, and then in my garage in the winters, what happens is um, like my garage door will just get frozen water droplets all along it. And you actually can just rip the bottom off of a garage door here in Canada very easily when it's really humid and it's a smaller garage. So this is going to be put in there. It's going to clear out that humidity in winters and keep it 
keep me from ruining my garage. So it's actually gonna save me quite a bit of money. App setup takes just minutes with the Medea Air application and it actually connected very easily. As you get the device installed, it becomes very easy to configure and control. You just go into the actual device and all of the controls that sit on the physical device sit within the app so i really enjoyed that plus there are a number of pre-created scenes for you that you can tap on or you can create your own scene to adjust how the device is working plus you have this little slider at the top to just target a specific humidity and when you choose the control option it'll just go to that you can schedule this device to just run and you can change that configuration at any time plus you can adjust all the modes for how you drain it now the most useful thing to me was if this then that with this because of those humidity sensors so i configured the SwitchBot humidity sensor, but what's really great about their trigger conditions is you can use temperature and humidity. So I ended up creating three different applets to maintain this. Turn on the dehumidifier to low at a certain humidity. Turn off the dehumidifier once we have it low enough. And if the temperature gets too high because it does pump out a little bit of hotter air, turn off the dehumidifier again. I have two AC units and I couldn't get these in the studio quite right. Now these are both from Medea again and they are smart air conditioning units. Now the one is a window AC unit, which I can't really use, but this one, I'm gonna replace my existing uh, air conditioning unit as part of the energy challenge. In terms of BTU ratings, this one actually has pretty similar ratings to my existing unit. So we're gonna be able to compare directly, I think, on both of these units. Obviously, these are gonna help brace the, the window hose that's kind of heading out your window. Let's see if I can get this one out. I think that one might have to sit. <laughs> Okay, we've also got some foam pads here. Foam pads with a little sticker. Ooh, that was a good throw. Throw that. Yeah, I'm throwing stuff in my living room now. Uh, and here's the other half. This is pretty heavy duty. So, you know, one of the things with my existing unit that isn't so great, uh, this is so flimsy. This is the part that kind of goes on your window. Sometimes I'm feeling like I could bend it or break it, and I think we all get that impression. This is feeling pretty sturdy. So this is this is where your hose is gonna kind of come up to, and then it's gonna be blowing the hot air out of there. Just gonna pull off some of the tape here. Now that looks like it was chomped a little bit. So I, I don't know, but I got a couple of foam pads here. Those feel like a, almost a soft pleather. Let's get in to the main unit. They really do well with the power adapters. They have obviously a reset and a test in case you're popping uh, the GC, GFCI in this, which that's really important to have on a unit that could be using this much power. All right, I found my manual. Oh, I got some foam pads but I think the whole thing is gonna come out at once. Some more foam pads, the one ring to rule them all. Let's just, let's just do it. This is, this is why you go to the gym. Oh, uh, okay, now funny story. I went full man mode on this and tried to lift it out of the box. Instead, remember that companies are smarter than you. <laughs> There we go. Oh, it's rolling. Is that rolling? It's got wheels. You gotta love that. You do get a full user manual. They really give you a lot of details in here about all your controls, plus what you can and can't do from, from the unit or with the unit. And they even show you how to do some of the installation, including with the application. Now you do get a drain pipe 
with this in case you uh, start to pull some of the humidity out of the air. Uh, you get a registration card and a really great remote. This is the same remote as the other AC unit, the window AC unit. Here's a little accessory. I'm not even sure what that is right now. And of course we get a couple of batteries for this. We've got uh, these two sticker pads and then this is a sticker as well. So this foam is gonna line inside of your window. You've got a second one right here. These are all our hose attachment components. So this is how we're gonna attach the bigger unit. Both of these work with Google, they work with Amazon, and they also work with If This Then That. Here's the hose. So this is gonna be really easy to pull out and then you can kind of pull up. And you can see that that is gonna bend in to your window. And I love the little latching mechanism right here. In terms of controls, you know, I really like this. This is a simple turning mechanism. I'm just doing that with my hand. Uh, this allows you to redirect and you can see quite a bit of airflow is possible out of this unit. Now the controls physically on the device, you've got all these different buttons. There's your power button. Uh, this is a nighttime mode. This is changing your fan in terms of a number of different modes. Plus you've got up and down buttons and there's gonna be a little LED panel right here that's gonna tell you the temperature. Uh, you've got the ability to schedule and switch between modes. You could turn on and off that scheduling. And this is how we're gonna connect to the app if this then that, Google Home and Amazon. Installation of the window coverings was quick and easy. I used all of the window coverings included and held them together with little tabs that were included as well. Additionally, I placed the foam pads you saw earlier outside of the panels, which helps insulate and therefore keeps heat out. Then you just take the connectors to your hose and you connect them into the unit itself. Or actually, in my case, I put them directly on the window covering. Then you stretch your hose up to the window and make the connection using the little clips on the connectors to securely fasten everything. Then you have to plug in the unit and everything's good to go. From there, setup in the Medea app is simple and requires you to just hold the Wi-Fi button on the unit for three seconds in order to initialize connection. Once connected in the application, the Duo has all of the controls in the app that are on the unit. There are some versions of this that have heater functions in them. So when you go to purchase this unit, you can look at that as an option to use it both in the winter and the summer. You can make the unit incredibly quiet and you can control all of the louvers, the temperature, the LEDs, the sounds, and of course, you can set schedules and other basic automations. This is again, a unit that you can connect to if this and that, Amazon or Google Home, but for this, I didn't feel the need to connect it at all with its great remote and the control in the app being so thorough. Plus, once you turn on the unit at all, it temperature controls itself, so it actually shuts off when it has succeeded at reaching the temperature you've set. Which brings me to the results of the energy challenge. My existing AC unit doesn't have the ability to measure the temperature in the room, which means it runs continuously at about 850 watts on its maximum cooling setting. In my room, that provided about 2.1 degrees Celsius of cooling per hour. The Medea unit provided an average of 3.6 degrees Celsius of cooling per hour using 1200 watts on its maximum cooling setting. So it used more energy, but it cooled the room at almost double the pace. And once it got to the desired temperature, it actually dropped to using about 300 watts per hour to keep the room at the temperature I wanted. So not only did I gain complete control of the room in terms of temperature, but even on full, I gained efficiency. Here's why. It took 333 watts of energy to cool the room by one degrees with Medea, while it took 404 watts of energy to cool the room by one degrees with my existing LG AC unit. So it's more efficient, it gives me better control, smart features, and honestly, it's just a much cooler unit. It gets me to a cooler spot in my home quicker. So I have to say that I really did enjoy 
this device from Medea and it's been highly reliable in terms of its Wi-Fi connection and its connectivity. Now, before we get to some more great brand new products to show you here, I wanna remind you, if you see something in the video that you really wanna see more of, let me know what kind of a video you'd like to see and which product. Now, I've already opened up this box because I wanted to make sure that what I thought was in here was actually in here. And this is a brand new product debut on Automate Your Life. Now, this is a 4K security system from Eufy. Now, Eufy has always been pretty good with their cameras, the recognition, and really just how the camera feeds look. But there's some exciting upgrades in here. One of the biggest things that I like about Eufy and their security system is the home base. Now this is a newer home base than the older one that I have. It's a little bit bigger. This is allowing you to store uh, footage from these cameras directly on here and it also manages a lot of uh, the events that are happening in your home. So you can access the, the video feeds here. That means you're not going to have cloud-based costs and obviously with the storage being here, you're not gonna have those cloud-based cost too. Plus, this is sitting somewhere else in your home. You can place it just about anywhere. So these are capturing the footage and it's all secure here within seconds on that hard drive. I've always loved that about what Eufy's doing. It also makes notifications much quicker. I've always experienced that these systems from Eufy can respond much quicker to you. So I'm really excited to see how that performs with the new home base. So we've got two cameras, plus the home base, plus I get to peel a sticker here. Woo! <laughs> okay. Now, here's the one thing they said that this is a little bit different and they did send me a hard drive, which I promptly dropped getting out of the package. So if I broke it, it's my own fault. But this has its own hard drive slot to expand the storage that's already on board. The other thing I really love about this home base, that's an ethernet port right there. So you know what, you're not tying up your home's Wi-Fi with traffic between everything. Cause these, I believe, and this was the old system, it communicated directly with the home base uh, using its own kind of private network that it made between the components. I'm gonna put my little top in there. Oh, it was kind of a magnet. Uh, that was nice. Then you can also use this as a charging base for the two cameras, although I don't think you're gonna need that. These are the new S330 cameras from Eufy. They have proper mount in the back, but what's really exciting about these, other than the 4K resolution, is there's the solar panel. I don't have a separate solar panel. And the battery, once you get it charged, it should last 365 days. They're saying these are built for cold weather climates and honestly, they feel ready. These are incredibly well sealed. Like there's nothing going on here. You got the little speaker ports at the bottom and at the back where you're next to your mounting gear here, you have your little port for getting to your charge, your charger. That's pretty well sealed and it's pretty deep actually. So that's a good sign to me for keeping these sealed. Otherwise there's no buttons except a little sink button here. And really this is just a very well-designed unit. There's a spotlight on these. You can set up how you want that spotlight to come on. There's also obviously night vision entirely on these things. And at that 4K resolution, plus I just love how this looks here. I don't know if you can tell really well, it just looks fantastic around that lens. I don't know what the blue stuff is, but that's cool looking Yuffie. Couple of mounting components. So, and these feel uh, a little heavier, a little more robust than some of the other camera models I've shown you in the past. On the bottom side, there you go. You're going to have the ability to put a screw through here so you can mount this just about anywhere. And then that comes on and you can screw this down in order to get this really tight on there. 
We have some manuals, ethernet cable. You gotta love when you get an ethernet cable and all the cables you need. Here's our power supply for the home base itself. Some mounting hardware and there's a little pin in here plus some additional screws. Oh, these are for the hard drive to keep it mounted in the home base. Some additional mounting hardware. You gotta have two packs for two cameras and this is a USB-C cable to USB-A for charging. The one thing I ever found with Eufy that I didn't love was just that some of the integrations, like, you know, you guys know I use SmartThings so heavily. There's not really uh, great integrations with some of the kind of those mid-level hubs for Eufy here. I don't think they need it in a lot of cases and you could do all this detection separately, but some of you might be looking for some of the automation options. That doesn't really exist here with Eufy. From a power perspective, this is how hard it is. I can hear it booting up in there. Now I don't have the ethernet cable, so this will be interesting to see if we can do it by Wi-Fi or ethernet. Welcome to Eufy Security. Follow the instructions in the Eufy Security app to set up the system. Home base is unable to connect to the internet. This is a pretty exciting product. It's pretty much brand new. This is the new Diva Smart Dimmer Switch. And yes, it works with your Lutron Cassetta system. Let me break into this real quick. Let's just get stuff out of here. In the box, we got the switch itself. We've got some mounting hardware. We've got some electrical uh, ties there. We've got a short little guide and then some instructions for how to get a better guide. And this little green piece of paper that I'm sure says something on it. Doesn't speak English, so I don't know what it's saying. We also get this, which is a jumper wire in case you're using basically a second switch, as far as I can tell here in the notes. I think one of the things that always got me with Cassetta was that the remotes were too complex and this is intended to look just like any dimmer switch in your home, but obviously it's working with the Cassetta system. Now I asked a lot of questions uh, with the engineers, with the people from Lutron and what I found out is that this is really smartly designed. Number one, if you have a three-way switch, you can just put this one in one of those and then the other switch will actually still work. Number two, the dimmer here. So you can set it and there will be a little LED that lights up to the dimming level that you've put on there. Of course, that's gonna be controllable in the app whether or not it's showing up. But if you control it to a higher percentage, let's say from the app or from voice or some other source, the bar will go above this physical dimmer switch and then you can still move it and make that adjustment physically. So it's merging the, the smart with the physical world in a really great way. The other thing that's really great, number three on this is, of course, it's gonna work with those Pico remotes. You can place those anywhere and still use these kinds of switches. So they're pretty much given me a number of situations and actually this should fit just about anywhere in your home. Number one, single pole or three way uh, situation. So switches you have in your home controlled from one or two switches. If you have multiple locations, so let's say you've got a set of lights that are controlled from like three different uh, switch locations, you can still use this. And what Lutron has been saying is they'll release a Diva accessory switch that will help you to take care of those situations. That'll be a cheaper version of this basically it'll be a smarter hardware uh, than your existing switch but not super smart so you won't be paying the same price every time i'm gonna get this installed in my home and show you how it works lutron also released the claro which is a 60 dollars smart switch just 10 dollars less than the diva but in terms of an actual installation there were some tricky things here it's not that the physical installation was difficult and actually I just had to look up some instructions on Lutron's website to make sure I had everything right. But with the fact that the four wires are tied directly into your Diva smart switch, you end up with a lot of extra wires and components inside of the light switches electrical box. There were four wire nuts 
added to my first box and actually I couldn't fit it in. At least not without taking out some of the other wires or cutting them short to where I might not be comfortable in the future. So I couldn't fit it in one of the lighting boxes that I wanted to use it in, but I think for most two gang and three gang switches, you're gonna have more than enough room. In the end, I did find a single gang switch that did work and I could fit everything in. And actually, the whole installation process was about 10 to 15 minutes and I didn't even have to use the ground, the green or the blue wires. Once installed, I had to make sure that it was a dimmable bulb and not a smart dimmable bulb. And that's something to keep in mind with any Lutron switches. I got me a big fruity drink. No, I am not sponsored. And I'm ready to get opening. Now, this said something about it being a uh, tracker of some sort. I gotta tell you, I got a tracker in my phone already. It's called a phone. I've already got Wi-Fi credentials and all kinds of things going on here. So I don't know what's happening, but it says Spectrum and the quick start guide is on the actual box. Hey, where's my card? Connected by AT&T. This is a bad news. AT&T doesn't operate in Canada. Although AT&T does usually work with Rogers here. Now, I know what this is. Okay, so this is an OBD2 device. So you're gonna plug that into your car. Now there's no other details in this box. I have nothing else. So I guess I've gotta plug this in and register it and then we'll see what we get. There is a little compartment here. I'm betting that is where the SIM card has already been installed and there is a little charging port. Let's get this thing connected and see how we can track ourselves. Since it's an OBD2 uh, port here that you're gonna plug into in your car, first of all, you've gotta find that. Second of all, you know, that probably means we're gonna get some readouts out of our car. And I imagine that not only will it have its own Wi-Fi here that it's broadcasting once it's plugged into your car, uh, but that'll mean we should be able to connect to it with our phone and an app. Let's go through that. This was actually a really interesting device to use over the last month, and it does some incredible tracking. Plus, you can get notifications on a number of different events. So this is really good to track kids and to find out if maybe they're pushing the car a little too fast. You don't really need to pay other than for the data card that goes into this device. I've really enjoyed understanding what my car is doing, how far I'm driving, and how much it's costing me even. Plus I can see some of my own scores and I can see how fast I'm going. So there's just so much data here and I've been so impressed with this little tracker. I thought I'd share a little story about my past. This knife came to me after I took an entire industrial facility down network wise by accident. I was working on what this project is. And uh, I was about two months into my engineering career and uh, someone told me to push a button. I pushed that button and it was sending out an update of what's called an HMI. Now an HMI going out has a lot of pictures on it. It's, it's got screens of the facility and people can click on it and they can do all kinds of things like start pumps or uh, close valves or check on the status of tanks. And so, you know, this facility was quite large. And when I sent out that update, it wasn't sending it out over ethernet. It was sending it over something called Modbus Plus. Now, that's a serial form of communication. It's, uh, I think it's called RS-485, and then it has some specific ways that the messages are sent. But to try and send graphics out across a network to about 10 different computers and monitors and different spots in the facility across a serial communication like that pretty much takes down the entire network. Now we had, from the moment I pressed that button, 10 minutes to give the control center, the, the people who were controlling the system uh, from very far away, 
We had 10 minutes to give it back to them. So we had to clear everything out, unplug everything, cancel all the process and get things back online within 10 minutes. And we managed to do that and I got a knife. This is a pretty exciting package of stuff from Zoos. Let me get everything out of the box and then we'll talk. Today, we're gonna to be going through the WaterLeak XS sensor, the temp and humidity XS sensor again. We got a smart plug from Zoos, the open and close XS sensor, the tilt slash shock XS sensor, a couple of mounting brackets or waterproof uh, cases, for some of the sensors. Let's do the water leak XS sensor. Now this is a 700 series Z-Wave product, which is what we should be seeing these days from most Z-Wave makers like Zoos. One day I'll get into this. That's, there's nothing there. <laughs> Look at that thing, you guys. There, there's tiny, tiny pins. Now there's four on there. Uh, it looks like I can open this up. We've got a little coin battery. As Soon as I pull that, we're in pairing mode. But the, I mean, the footprint on this thing, that is incredible. I think that's the smallest leak sensor I've ever seen. Uh, and you know, Zoos has got quality all over. The only thing I'll say with this, there's no detection on the top. That might bother some of you, but honestly, really neat. Let's do the open and close sensor from Zoos. Now this is the XS model again. These are fairly small based on what I've seen, which is really nice when it comes to a contact sensor, that's what you want. And uh, it's dual sided, so that's a really nice feature. You can see the little gray line there and that means it's dual sided. We can pop it open and get to the battery. Plus, uh, they actually gave us something to pop open that compartment with and they gave us some extra, some stickers here for this sensor now. I mean, you don't even need to use much on this. It's such a light device. And there we go, I'm into it. All I gotta do is pull that tab. We're into pairing mode. And I do have a proper Z-Wave, uh, what do you call it, DSK. Like the, it's gonna properly, securely connect to your smart home hub. Let's do another. Now this is a tilt slash shock sensor. So I'm thinking that this will manage vibration or you just kind of banging on near or around it. So that's actually a really nice type of sensor that we don't get that often. Again, basically the same device as, as I've had with other XS sensors. We get the sticker, we get the sensor, it's incredibly small. Get in there, it's a CR2032 battery. We've gotta pair this with a hub. And I have the excess temp and humidity sensor here. So four different sensors from Zoos, all part of that XS lineup. Now actually, this one is the biggest one I have seen. So we're getting some of our mounting hardware and that little tool for kind of opening up the device. We got our little manual for pairing it. And I'm seeing at the bottom here, that's where it's taking in the temperature and humidity or the air for those measurements in the device. We can pop up, open the compartment. Took me a bit, but I got it open. And there we are. Now this is a bigger battery. Again, I've got the proper code here for connecting that to a hub. Yeah, this is a 2450. So I think this is doing a little more work than those other sensors. It's a bit of a bigger footprint, if you can call any of this a big footprint from Zoos. But all of those sensors are incredibly small. I love the fact that we just got these little gray white boxes. They're just a little off white as a box. Incredible stuff. Now. They gave us these waterproof cases. So this doesn't make it like bulletproof for the outdoor environment, but it does make it waterproof. Okay, so I have that off. There's a little bit of mounting hardware in there because we have these little screw holes there. And then you fit these, these in here. Oh man, if I push that in, that ain't coming out ever. I don't know that I want to do that yet because I haven't even taken the battery off. Oh boy. How did you lose your sensor, Brian? Well, I put it in the case. Yeah, that'd be tough to get out of there, but that's what's got to happen for a waterproof seal. 
So this is a mounting bracket, which would is kind of a useful idea actually for the temperature and the humidity sensor. I just fit it in. The reason being is that's gonna keep those air gaps open. You're not gonna set this against something or kind of mess that up. So that's actually a decent idea. Those are the smallest screws of all time to get that mounted somewhere. Let's go to the Zoo's smart plug. Now this says right on it, resistive loads, 15 amps, but a motor with a third of a horsepower on it. This is the, I think, third smart plug I've seen in the last little while that actually has a motor rating on it. This is really great to see out of these companies kind of coming out and stating this is what we can do with these inductive loads. Now they're also saying a thousand watt incandescent and 150 watt LED. Manual, smart plug, not a large smart plug whatsoever. We do get a little button and our proper pairing QR code there for getting this connected to a hub securely. Let's have a look. All these guys have sent me a few things and to be honest, I've been really, really impressed with everything they're doing. Now, uh, when I first started to cut into this, I thought it was uh, like clothing, like it, it was soft enough. And I thought, why would I ever get clothing? Buy a t-shirt. Now, this one is their most popular selling model of Android TV. In the past, I've shown you uh, the KA1 and the KA2. Each of those have really interesting options to them. The KA1 was like a big Google Assistant speaker. The KA2 has a camera on it. And this is intended to be a true just Android TV device. So it's the KM2 and they always do really well on their hardware specifications. And what I liked about this one is its small form factor versus some of the others. So this is not gonna be something that's really gonna be prominent. There are some really different connections here. And there's, of course, uh, solid state or flash card memory right here that you can add, a couple of USB ports, which is always important for peripherals. I like to get things like controllers connected directly in. Plus, and when you look at the back, this is a full kind of TV device here. You have actually an optic cable connection, which is fairly rare to see. Uh, HDMI, of course, but then we have also the little AV port and ethernet, and then of course, just power. All of that fitting here on a very small device. Okay, let me get stuff out of the box and do this. Always nice to get an HDMI cable for the actual device. That's gonna be a quick connection. We don't gotta think about that. We've got our power adapter right here. And I always like their remotes. They're, they're not over the top. There's nothing too crazy going on here, but they have a ton of buttons on there. Now, uh, the ones I've had have lasted, uh, you know, it's a few months already, but I haven't seen any real change in the battery. So these are not battery intensive remotes. They have a nice soft feel to them. And, uh, and yet the, none of the buttons have broken. So, and I've been using these extensively in my home actually. They have a couple of the shortcut buttons. So uh, YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, and it looks like Google Play. That's, that's interesting. Is a Google Play store even a thing anymore? One, two, plus a couple of batteries. You're ready to go. I'm gonna plug this into my TV and I'm excited for this one. Welcome again, automators. You know, this has been one of the busiest months for me ever. And with as many new smart home products that are being released right now, you can imagine just how many products we're being asked to work with and how many we're trying out. You heard me mention the energy challenge in the Medea segment, and this is an important initiative to me. And I think for many of you, you'll be feeling the pinch of power prices rising along with everything else in this world. So every time we can find a way to save a little bit of money every day, no matter how small, I think that's great for us and our families. So please take the energy challenge with me by heading to the website in the description below and filling out the simple form. Commit to saving just a little money 
and energy in your life and then go automate it. It's simple and in case you haven't noticed, we've had some of the best smart home creators taking the challenge and working hard to give you great ideas and great solutions for saving money in your life. Now this one says blue tiger on the box. What is this? This could be extremely interesting as a product. Now this is a headset, it's Bluetooth 5.0, but there's a couple of really different features in here to separate it from some others. Now, the Bluetooth capability, obviously you're gonna get some quick pairing instructions or some pairing instructions. This is a solar charging device. It says it's always charging. So it looks like this whole strip is basically gonna take light from the surroundings and charge this. Looks like we've got a little stand for this. Nice little uh, leather stand actually, or I don't know, is that pleather or leather? I think it's leather, guys. So th this is nice feeling up here on the top on my noggin. We've got a little dial here that seems to be releasing. So this is how you tighten up. Once you've got it kind of set, now it's fairly well set in there. We've got a little uh, light slash button on the side here. And then there's a bunch of different buttons here. So one plus and a minus, which you gotta think are uh, volume buttons. And here's my little charging port. Okay, so this is an adjustment too. This flexes, obviously. Here's your length adjustment if you'd like it. Uh, this is softer. I don't know that that's super soft, so that might bug you after a little bit. Blue Tiger USA, gonna download this real quick. Blue Tiger, look at that loading screen. Now that's a fun loading screen. So I'm gonna get this set up and connected. I think it needs a bit of time to charge and then I'm gonna show you how it works. Okay, I took a few minutes and I think I figured everything out here. This is not a stand, <laughs> this is a hanger. So it'll hang off the side of whatever you'd like. You have an opportunity to take that and go further out if you need to. Then I've got a little bit of a charge on this thing. And I hit scan, scanning, scanning. Oh wait, I gotta hold this for five seconds. You know what? I'm just gonna pair them through Bluetooth. Now they did. Now I have 50% battery and let's go into the app. Ooh. Now we have quite the interface. And this is an indicator for how much charge you're getting. And then you can see in the app, it actually gives you a drain in milliamps and then a gain based on what you're pulling out of. Well, it's, it's just magical. Let's call my dad, see what happens. Hello, can you hear me? How does it sound? I sound normal? Well, I'm using a headset. I'm using like a, it's a solar powered headset, mom. I know. And guess what? You're uh, on a video. <laughs> well, no one can, no one can hear you, mom. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. Well, oh, let's see how far I can walk. Oh, oh, we got a few things. Ooh, doggy, that was loud. Okay, this, uh, this is different, but it looks pretty neat. Now, these are two different portable hard drives with some pretty serious encryption. And I actually spent some time speaking with uh, one of the engineers for both of these products to find out about the encryption. Pop her open. Pop her open. I probably should do one at a time, but no, let's not. Now, this first one, is a little USB drive. Now, this one says 16 gigabytes. Whoa. What's going on? Oh, it opened. <laughs> There's a little keypad on that. So this is a 16 gigabyte. It's not huge, but it's a little jump drive with encryption. Now you can unlock it using that keypad or you can unlock it using their application. Here's the other thing, they've given me some ends and look at that, I even got a USB-A right on the first connection. So now it's a USB-C. So let's have a look here. This is a micro USB adapter. 
They've given me a little uh, I lose things too easily thing and a little manual, plus those two adapters for this one. And I really like this little case. Now, these are hardware encrypted. So this is not a software encryption going on, which is really important in the security world. Uh, plus, these are gonna work with any operating system. I'm told they'll go between Mac and PCs in about a second. And look at this nice little carrying case I'm getting with this one. So uh, this is something I think a lot of people are working from home these days. And I can see a lot of people having a use for something like this. Now this is a solid state drive. So we're not, uh, we're not talking about, you know, a spinning disc in here. We're talking about this can be uh, pretty reliable for a number of years. And I noticed the warranty said three years on that drive. Th this one is 500 gigabytes and boy, oh boy, that is, you know, I used to use that type of a connection uh, for one of the cameras I had here. So that just slips in there and it's USB-C. Plus I've got a second cable which does go USB-A and obviously with my case, I'll be able to keep these cables with me. Some other really interesting things is that you can manage this remotely and you can lock out the drive. So these are the kinds of things that you can store uh, really important information for your business or if you're working for a company, this is something you could be storing on and then you can lock it down if you ever lose that drive or that USB key and you have all of the remote management features to do that. Plus, it only unlocks when you're within range with your phone. So these are actually really impressive encryption and security features on a couple of drives. So I'm really excited to try these out. All right, come on, let's get Cuddy. Cuddy, then a box. You know, that box got squished a little. You never like to see that with electronics, do ya? It is the 2K version of the pan and tilt cam from SwitchBot. So that's quite an upgrade in terms of the processing power. And I mean, this is already a pretty good offering. It has SD cards, it works with their hub. There's all kinds of automations you can run with this. So uh, this is SwitchBot continuing to round out their lineup. Let's see, let's see. I don't see any physical hardware changes. So, you know, physical shutter closing, that is really important as far as I'm concerned with a camera. Uh, it also has the micro SD card as per the usual or the, the other one. And then of course we have the mounting hardware that we're gonna use. Now this is full pan and tilt. So it's going all the way around and you have that micro USB port here plus a little button. Now let's go back to the sounds of tech. All right, let's see what else we get. As per usual with SwitchBot, you always get a good manual. This manual is actually pretty comprehensive with these cameras. They give you a way to reach out and get support. Plus, this is a mounting hardware diagram that goes right with their mounting hardware. You get the little, I don't even know what you call this thing. What do you call this thing? It's a pin of some sort, but that's to uh, reset the device if you ever need to. There's a little button in there. And we, of course, have an actual power brick for this device, some mounting hardware, the other mounting hardware, and then quite a long USB or micro USB cable. On the camera itself, I can see a couple of microphone ports. It has night vision. It is a full two-way speaker, so you can communicate with people. And of course, with the pan and tilt uh, function, you have quite a bit of different mounting options. Now, I do wish that sometimes SwitchBot would include, you know, just a little bit of different mounting hardware. But one of the things that I've noticed here is that's a tripod mount. So you could get this in a lot of different directions now. And of course, all the software options are really comprehensive to go with this. So if you're hanging it upside down, you can of course flip the picture. I will be comparing this against a 
another camera that uh, SwitchBot is selling and some other pretty premium devices on the market today. I think we're going to see something really interesting come out of that comparison video, so stay tuned. Let's get a funny cat camera and showcase it. Now, obviously I talked to the folks at SwitchBot quite a bit and this one, this is not really something that you're gonna be able to see in the North American or even European markets. So you can see by the writing on the box, not really made for here, but we got this one specially sent to us. And as I was speaking to the guys at SwitchBot, they were saying, you know, we'd like to see, is this something that people would order if they were ordering one of the pan and tilt cameras from SwitchBot? So, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Now we get a tail and we get a sock, well, I don't know, <laughs> that's cute. Okay, the colors are pretty fun and uh, you know, that has a pretty nice look after it's done. Now the tail is intended to go where the power port is, the micro USB. And what you're supposed to do is get the cable actually through this. So you can see right here, kind of opens up and then you're gonna be able to have it sitting there with your power cable in there. If you're buying one, is this the one that you're gonna buy? I think for myself, you know, if it's in the house, I think I'm doing this. It's just kind of fun. Yeah, that actually works remarkably well. You can see the, the cables coming out of the back, just kind of a dual tail thing going on. And now I can pan and I can tilt and it's remaining in there really, really well. So that's smartly designed and we're ready to go with our cat cam. Do you think it meows when it starts up? Last month, I opened something up from a company called Sound Pete's, because I told you Sound Beats was taken. Now, these ones look a little more deluxe than the last one. They say they have some touch control, and they also say they have 20 hours of battery life. And I did enjoy the last ones. The sound quality was really good. Uh, <laughs> we still get the smallest cable of all time to charge things, but it's USB-C. And the case here from Sound Pete's, like this is really small, it's light, uh, it's fairly stylish, like I, I like the way that looks. Uh, as soon as you open it, you get these three little dots there. That's nice, and your charger is in the back. These are definitely a little bigger. Let's get these in here. Oh yeah, these are a little bigger. Good seal in my ears already. Really quick to set up. Let's go ahead and do that. Mmm. Actually, these sound wonderful, really, deep sound coming out of these. Yeah, it's really well balanced actually. I gotta turn them down a little bit just to hear the bottom end, but really well balanced. I'm actually really happy with these. Now let's see what we get for control. There's a lot of different features here and it actually depends what you're doing with them, but I'll show you a better shot of this diagram, but there's so many different controls based on how many times you're tapping and what you're doing on the phone. So you can bring up uh, the voice assistant. It actually just gave me an opportunity to do that. And you can move between songs. You can change the noise cancellation on each of the earbuds. So there's a lot of different features here. And to be honest, the sound quality was really good. These do have a little bit of a different fit. Like they do give you some extra pads in the packaging here, but in general, they fit very nicely into my ear. Uh, with that three different modes of active noise cancellation on these, you can really do some different things, some different activities and move between them quite quickly once you learn the commands that are on this. All right, I'm pretty sure I've got stuff from these people before, but I don't know who it is. Fluff, 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 party. No, I don't think I've got anything from these guys. I have no idea what I'm looking at. This is, uh, yeah, okay, okay. We're figuring it out here, people. Now, this is uh, a Kickstarter, I think. It's called Tick Time. And I think it's just intended as a tiny little cube that can do some time management for you. Inside of the box, we have this tiny little 
This, there is not much to this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, it's time, it's counting down. What am I doing? <laughs> oh no, stop yelling at me. Now it's on full power. I paused the timer, can I erase the timer? So I've got the manual, we've got the cube, which I'm gonna show you in a second, and then we have, I think, just a little charging cable, and this one is USB-C to USB-A. Now, this cube has a lot of functions on it. Essentially, it's to tell the time. So this is the way you're supposed to hold it. You can turn it on with a single click, and then there is uh, the ability to turn off the sound. So I just turned off the sound there, and then I can cycle through. Uh, that's a vibration mode. And then I have the lowest sound, medium, and high. Now it's already uh, counting. And the reason it's already counting is because there's a bunch of fingerprint buttons on the side here. So when I tap on one of those, you're gonna see it go up by five minutes every time. That's because that is the five minute side. There's a one minute side, there's a 10 minute side. And then the intention with something like this is that you can work, I think they called it Pomodoro setting. Uh, you work for a time period and then it gives you like a five minute break. Now you can also custom set time so I can just add seconds or minutes and then I can let the countdown timer go. The little speaker is in the back but there's a second, uh, there's, there's a second little panel here. So when you put it like this, it's actually showing the time ticking by on the top here. So there's actually a lot of functions on this thing. The other thing I really like about this is how the matte finish feels in my hands. Like this device actually feels remarkably nice. So overall, from a design perspective, this is a wonderful little device. I mean, obviously it's just telling time and it's just doing countdown timers, but this is really nice to have. It looks nice, it feels nice. It's nice. Automators, thank you for spending this time with me and seeing all the latest and greatest from the industry. I hope you'll join me live every month on the first of the month for the premiere of these videos. You'll get to chat with me and ask all the questions you'd like. Plus, talk to other automators who love building their smart homes and saving time in their lives. I'm really enjoying chatting with all of you there too, so I hope you'll join us. This month, a ton of creators came out with their own energy challenge videos. There are some incredible ways for you to save hundreds of dollars every month in that playlist up on screen now. So go check that out and you'll save yourself all the power. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.